Hi guys, welcome to the channel and the review and unboxing or unbagging since there's no actual box of John Lennon's Imagine. There's that familiar artwork. Now, uh, this release has an extra record. It's the Ultimate Mix 2 LP edition. And that extra LP has some demos, outtakes, and alternate takes, even a live performance. So, here on the sticker, you can see the familiar track listing for LP1 over there and LP2 over here. Now, let's take a look at the back which is as it should be. John Lennon looking up at the sky and the spine looks like this with an added 2LP on the label, which is proper. Now, I was completely unfamiliar with the Beatles solo albums and one of my ambitions when I started getting into vinyl last fall is to own and get acquainted with at least one album from each of the Beatles. With Lennon, Imagine was a fairly simple choice since it does top or rank high on many Lennon album rankings and it's probably the most well-known of all the Beatles solo albums in general. And it was re-released with this edition last fall. So let's take a look inside. And uh, there's some postcards here as well. And that's it. So starting with the postcards, here's uh, the first one is I think it's of John and Yoko. John is some kind of animal and Yoko's in the tree. No idea what that is. And here's another one of John with a pig. It looks a bit like the front cover of uh, Paul McCartney's Ram. I don't know if it's intentional. It probably is because there was this uh, spat going on between them at the time. But anyway. And here's the poster with uh, John Lennon at a piano. Looks like the one in the Imagine Music video, but I don't know. The poster is actually quite tall. As you can see, the, the top of it here it doesn't really fit into the frame, but it's pretty much the ceiling. And you get the gist of the poster. It's quite nice, actually, if you want to frame it. And so let's start with uh, the first LP. Uh, this is the album itself with... Uh, uh, very hard to read lyrics going around the sleeve. Imagine, crippled inside, jealous guy, give me some truth. Yes, this is not the, <laughs> it's not the easiest way to read lyrics. And this is probably even more difficult with the credits in a circle. But uh, it looks nice, you know. It's, Leaves, leaves an impression. So the record itself is uh, black 180 gram vinyl. And this is the label, John Lennon's face. And this is side two with the sliced apple. You can see the tra track listing there as well. So that's the first LP, which is the album itself. And the second LP is the one, like I mentioned before, with the, the outtakes. Um, and the sleeve has some liner notes for the album itself. Uh, the one that's on the first LP, more specifically about the new stereo mix that they did for, for this release, as well as notes and credits for the LP of outtakes, which is on the other side of the sleeve. So let's uh, take a look at this second record, get it out of the sleeve. And the label here is actually completely different. It, it's more reminiscent of the of the cover with the clouds instead of, of the Apple uh, label. And side two is uh, I don't know if it's identical, but it looks looks the same. So those are the records. The LP of Outtakes and the Ultimate Stereo Mix. So in this packet, I think there's a clear vinyl version as well, but I just took the one that was available in the shop. 
So those are the records, the poster, the postcards, and the album cover itself. Now, I was thinking about keeping that plastic on, but, you know, I'm just going to take it off. I, I don't really care about keeping the plastic on. I, I probably get irritated by the fact that it'll get wrinkled and whatever. I have plastic covers for it anyway, so off it goes. That means we have to cut loose the sticker, of course. I need to keep my hype sticker. And there we go. So yeah, let's have a listen and do a short review for each of the tracks. The album kicks off with the title track Imagine, which you probably know since it's only one of the most well-known songs ever and probably the one John Lennon's solo song everyone knows. Personally, I think it's really good, with a wonderfully simple melody, but it's far from my favorite on the album, not to mention among John Lennon's other songs. Something I noticed on this mix is the change in the piano when John starts singing. It never sounded so drastic, but I'm not sure what's been done there. Crippled Inside is a fun but biting song, a kind of honky-tonk happy melody with aggressive lyrics. The funny thing here is how old-timey the music is, considering John's criticism of Paul McCartney's granny music. I won't use the harsher term here. Whereas this, musically, could sit comfortably next to Paul's Your Mother Should Know and When I'm 64. Seeing as how I love Paul's granny music, I'm really fond of this one too. The folksy pastiche works well while not seeming too forced. Track three is Jealous Guy, and oh man, this is the other song from the album I'd heard before, and probably my favorite. The first time I'd heard it was actually in the movie Look Who's Talking Too, but hearing it in the context of the album really focused on the song, brings out the melancholy, the pain, the love, the tender piano, and the desperate strings, and John's fragile voice. John wrote it in India, and it appears on the Beatles' Esher demos as Child of Nature, but these lyrics make it so much more accessible. It's So Hard brings out the blues, and it's one of those songs where I don't ever really think about it, but when it's playing, I really dig it. It's a great change of pace from the ballad before, and I love the saxophone and the way John plays with the texture and tone of his voice. It's gritty and evocative, a rock blues track where you can almost smell the smoke in a dark and dingy bar. Closing out side A is I don't want to be a soldier mama, I don't want to die, or I don't want to be a soldier mama, or I don't want to be a soldier, depending on which track listing you're reading. It's basically a jam session and another one of those songs that I don't really quote unquote like, but there's something hypnotizing about it. The driving beat, the constantly changing measure of when the singing comes in, the dragging resistant sensation from John's vocals and George Harrison's amazing slide guitar combined with the oppressive mix and forward drive it always hooks me and while I don't like it when I'm not listening to it I love it while it's playing opening side B is the excellent give me some truth where John really shines with some amazing lyrics and George Harrison contributes with an absolutely unforgettable guitar solo the song is a sharp political diatribe with some really inventive wordplay and while the beat is fierce and driving as is George's solo the lyrical eloquence is an absolute joy to listen to John includes some whoos and ahs as if to underline his frustration and it works to the fullest extent with the tension always present throughout this rocker. Definitely one of my favorites on the album. Track two completely changes the pace with the intimate and vulnerable Oh My Love. Starting off with a tender guitar which I believe is also provided by George Harrison. He plays like on half the album's tracks. The song is almost like a meditation with its repeating stanzas. After the previous track, this is like a soothing balm for the mind, and the song gives me the sensation where you see your love in the early morning light, and in that fragile moment of quiet, your life's purpose is brilliantly clear, but also in danger of being obscured by everything else. A simple but gorgeous song. So, so Track three is the somewhat controversial How Do You Sleep, which has a great funky melody and interplay between the keyboards and guitar. 
to be honest, this song always makes me a bit sad because it exemplifies the hostility between John and Paul McCartney at this time, this being a pretty nasty response to the more vague criticism in Paul's Too Many People. I want my Beatles to get along, so I have to actively try to not think about the lyrics while listening to it. I can recognize it's a good song, ignoring the lyrics, but with my bias, I can't really go further than that. How can I go forward when I don't know How? Question mark, is another slower song which does its best to change the mood to a more positive vibe. It's a beautiful ballad, a sweet and almost saccharine song that probably sounds the most 70s of the whole album, and as such a bit dated. It's one of the weaker tracks, if not the weakest, on the album, but has enough going for it to take us to the closer. Finishing the album is O oh Yoko, and while I'm no Yoko apologist, I actually have a really hard time with not just her voice, but her presence in the Beatles' final years. This song is actually tremendous in that I don't mind singing along, chanting O oh Yoko time and time again. It's a really cute song with a lovely uplifting melody and a breezy harmonica to end the album feeling like I want to run in the dewy grass with my arms outstretched, a big smile on my face. Basically a great closing song. Now, when I was getting acquainted with these songs, I wanted to give each track the time it deserves to sink into my consciousness, and I think I've given all the songs a fair shot. Overall, I'm actually surprised, even though I shouldn't be, that I enjoyed this album as much as I did. It's one I've listened to from beginning to end over quite some time now, and basically never want to skip a track. I haven't heard any of John Lennon's other solo albums yet, and I'm sure I will soon enough, but this one I highly recommend. Okay. Record 2 of the Ultimate Mix 2 LP release includes some demos, outtakes and alternate takes and recordings of the tracks. It has 12 tracks in total, so that's one version of each track except Imagine and Cripple Inside that has two extra versions. If you like that kind of stuff, it's a nice addition, but compared to what's available, this vinyl version just gives you a small selection really. In order to get the singles of the era like Power to the People or Happy Christmas, and another 23 alternate mixes, outtakes and so on, I think 35 in total, plus short audio documentaries and such, you really should get the deluxe 4 CD set, which also includes a couple of DVDs or Blu-ray discs. Or you could stream it on Spotify if that works for you. But for me, I was really only interested in the album itself to experience it for the first time as an album in the best possible way. So if you like this video, please click that like button, subscribe for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching, for listening. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and I'll see you next time around. Bye.